I think the biggest thing that ever hit me was Eileen Fisher said that 85% of clothing, whether you donate it or not, ends up in a landfill every year. My name is Mike Mahar. I am the co-founder and CEO of Taylor Stitch. Taylor Stitch is based in San Francisco, California. I grew up uh, just north of Portland, Maine in a 6,000 person cow town. Um, went to school outside of Boston and ended up heading west after that. Right after college, we, um, my buddy and I knew we wanted to move out here. We had two friends who had graduated a year before. I had never been here. I packed up, you know, two lacrosse bags worth of clothes. You know, we filled up my Nissan Pathfinder and shipped it out. We hopped on a plane on August 28th, 2007 and haven't looked back. This endeavor began when we decided that our first idea, which was a van rental company, um, was gonna be a tough sell, you know, as we graduated college, which is 2008 and gas prices were not too far off from where they are currently. Um, actually, may maybe even higher. And the financial crisis made it hard to finance, um, you know, buying a whole whole pile, pile of vans and getting people to drive them around the country. Started out of uh, out of our apartment that we called the Slipper Studio since nobody had to go to an office and everybody just wore slippers all day. Talked about customer shortage, which is kind of an interesting juxtaposition. We didn't really have any experience or any thought about why, why we would do this aside from my uh, best, best friend and co-founder, um, his dad would always bring back custom shirts from Hong Kong because uh, he was in the toy industry. My buddy would steal them and bring them to school. But you know, we were we called ourselves the perfect medium, both 5'9", 170, 175 pounds, and we couldn't find a shirt that fit. This was the days where you know even the Brooks Brothers or J. Cruz Slim Fits were you know, still kind of parachutes on people of our size. And you know the idea of a custom shirt felt really good because you know historically custom shirts were kind of for like the upper white collar crust. And we wanted to figure out how to make it more casual, a little bit more relaxed. The name was this kind of engineered, it was funny. Our, uh, our first apartment was at the corner of Taylor and Clay, which is actually a really cool, there's a, it's, our apartment was kitty corner to Steve McQueen's apartment in the movie Bullet, uh, which was kind of funny. And there was this amazing picture of him kind of leaning on the Taylor and Clay sign with like a great trench coat. And so this idea of Taylor, like the name Taylor is an obvious play on tailoring. And then Stitch kind of came up as the backbone of every garment is like what's holding it together. And you know, great sewing and great stitching is you know, what we believe makes it, you know, in many facets, a great garment. The early days were, there, there wasn't much to them. You know, there was a lot of, we'll call it brand development. You know, climbing mountains, skiing down them, fly fishing in Tahoe, hanging out. You know, we were just trying to figure out how to get things made. Um, you know, and at, at the earliest set, we were basically selling custom shirts door to door. And then from there, we took all of the measurements and all of the kind of, you know, aggregated data, like body data that we had. And we thought about making ready to wear shirts differently. So, you know, what we were kind of seeing at this time was you move from the East Coast to San Francisco and fewer people are wearing ties. Everybody's got their sleeves rolled up. So you went from this you know, way that we used to buy shirts, which was neck and sleeve, to really what mattered was the fit of the body. And alpha sizing, you know, small, medium, and large really didn't make sense either because, you know, there was so much variance between like somebody's small versus somebody else's small. And what we figured out we were able to do, which we still do today, is size by chest. And so, you know, in the same way you'd go buy a suit jacket, you know, 36, 38, 40, 42, et cetera, um, what that allowed us to do is make a better fitting shirt. And the reason is because when you go alpha sizing, most brands are going between three and four inches on the actual circumference of any shirt, you know, for like the main measurements, which are chest, um, waist, hip. And we're only doing two. I think inspiration changes as your, you know, as your life changes. Now, now that I'm a father of two, you know, I think like family is an inspiration and, you know, like, you know, as we think about building clothes for, you know, people who are busy, it's like you want clothes that are going to be rough and tough and, you know, look good and, you know, kind of any situation. There's brands that are inspirations, you know, I think like 
Patagonia's um, value proposition. I think they've always been a, a leader in, you know, I mean, like Yvonne Chouinard famously has said, like, I don't want you to buy the product that you don't need, you know, and like that is the antithesis of what a retail company theoretically should do. Uh, you know, we always kind of said, if we do a good enough job, we should put ourselves out of business because we're making product that's just going to last. I mean, Mikey um, grew up in Maine, very close to L.L. Bean. And so L.L. Bean was always our North Star for, you know, A, customer service, B, product experience. Because our inherent belief is that while these are all product companies, they're hospitality companies as much as they are product companies. And being able to back up that, uh, that product guarantee with a service guarantee and a service experience is just such an important thing. You know, the ocean mountains and like nature inspire me a ton you know like if you look at a lot of taylor stitch it's you know very earth tone um driven and like i think that inspires a lot of like who our guy is too um they aren't you know we do some we do some flashy fun prints and like don't get me wrong that's like a bunch of fun but it's not like the core of, you know what the business is the taylor stitch aesthetic really comes from an aggregation of you know kind of how we grew up and where we are today so we kind of say like you know, we were three preppy kids from the Northeast that moved out West and kind of let our hair down a bit. So you know, there's definitely, as we've started to actualize summer, you know, you look at like our summer collections, they are more California, they are more fun. There's a lot more print. There's a lot more kind of like, you know, camp collar shirts and things like that. <clears throat> and in the kind of fall winter, we go back to kind of our Northeastern agrarian roots with like a lot of wax canvases boots, you know, rugged denim and things of that nature. The, the fun thing about Taylor Stitch is that our guy kind of runs the gamut. You know, we've had, you know, I, I kind of think back to the early days when we were, you know, really in the store a lot and we'd have, you know, 17 year old, you know, kind of denim, young denim heads come in and, you know, talk to us about salvage denim. And then we'd have like 78 year old Vietnam vets come in and get custom shirts made and everything in between. So that was kind of the fun thing is you don't grow out of Taylor Stitch. You know, it's a premium product. It's not a luxury price point. So, you know, if you if you kind of live in the world where you're like, I just want great product that's gonna last and fit, you can kind of run Taylor Stitch throughout your entire life. Our team is about uh, somewhere between 20 and 25 strong. Um, we use a few outsourced agencies and we're dispersed all over the country, you know, COVID kind of taught us that we could do this from anywhere. We have, you know, our our engineer is in Santa Barbara. We have a finance team in Twin Falls, Idaho. Uh, we have our, you know, physical product creative director in Columbus, Ohio. You know, we have had team members that have moved to San Diego, then back up to Portland, Oregon. You know, what we've really figured out is like, despite the fact that you know, we make a product that people need to touch, we can kind of do this from anywhere. Our creative team, I think, is second to none, and they tell beautiful visual stories um, and beautiful stories in the written word, too. And we've invested a lot of time and energy in developing that from a brand perspective over the years. So, you know, we do these quarterly photo shoots where you know, we'll go somewhere great and partner with whether it's a ranch in you know Wyoming or an artist on the coast of Maine, you know, to, to kind of tell these like really rich visual and written stories that I think our customer really relates to. And, you know, we also look at these as like an introduction into, you know, as a customer, like your next vacation or the next piece of art you buy or, you know, or something of that nature. We want to be an arbiter of culture as much as we want to be in, you know, of taste and style. So like, you know, we, we kind of lean away from sustainability and lean into responsibility. We think it's more all encompassing um, kind of thought process and feel that sustainability is kind of like thrown around a little too willy nilly. Um, so yeah, like, you know, from, you know, how we source to, you know, how we sell, we're responsibly built for the long haul. And what that means is like, at the basis of responsibly built is we care about the people that are making things. So paying like more than prevailing wages at our factories. Um, we care about the fabrics that we're using. So I think we're, you know, over 99% organic cotton right now. Uh, if it's virgin cotton, we use recycled cotton, we use recycled polyester, we use a lot of hemp, um, we, you know, we use merino wool, you know, all of our leathers are leather working group gold certified, 
you know, like we, you know, all of our boots are resolable. You know, all of these things that we're doing to try and keep things out of the waste stream. The jeans I'm wearing are probably one of the first pairs of jeans we ever made. And like, I sent them down to a guy in Texas and had him, you know, rip, rip both side and inseams and patch the whole front of them and put them back together because, I mean, A, because I love them so much and they're kind of a piece of me at this point, um, because we don't want to see things going to waste. The, the way that we stay relevant is by making new products that we know our guys love. You know, we involve our customer very deeply in a lot of the decision making around product. You know, like obviously we design a ton, um, but then what we'll do is we'll do things like, we have this thing we do every quarter called fabric voting. We'll kind of put all of our new designs out to our customers. And, and even before we do the kind of the workshop uh, crowdfunding stuff and say, what do you guys like? You know, and everybody votes on it. We kind of use that plus, um, you know, our own internal data, sales data, um, and kind of triangulate, you know, what we should be making on a go forward basis. And that's allowed us to, you know, be smart around inventory, stay close to our customer, um, and do a myriad of other things that just make sure we're not wasting a ton. The future of Taylor Stitch is really about consistency. You know, we're building this brand for a century, not the next five years. We don't follow trends. We don't look at like the color reports for fashion every, uh, every quarter, every season. You know, we're gonna keep doing what we're doing because we believe that like when you build a customer base that trusts you, you know, you, that is easy to lose. And, you know, we respect the hell out of it and want to keep doing what we're doing for a long time. Yeah, you know, like we'll do some fun stuff here and there, but like we want our guy to know that he can come back to us as a stalwart in his closet, um, you know, for, you know, decades to come.